Ben Solo kills his first Jedi this week on Star Wars Weekly. Hello everybody, it's Star here. Welcome back to the channel. As always, I'm talking all things Star Wars from the comics, novels, TV series, and more. This week we have just one comic to talk about, but it's a pretty good comic, and that is issue number three of The Rise of Kylo Ren, written by Charles Soule, with artwork by Will Sliney, and this is an epic four-issue miniseries, so we are in the penultimate issue. Things are happening. This wasn't my favorite that we've gotten so far out of the issues, but solid work again by the creators because we were getting never before seen story points relating to Kylo Ren or Ben Solo's fall and transformation into Kylo Ren. So this last story we pick up where we have Kylo Ren seeking out the Knights of Ren after he spoke with Snoke. He has, you know, demolished the temple of Luke Skywalker. He has supposedly killed Luke Skywalker. He is on the run from some Jedi Padawans that weren't there at the time of the demo demolition of the temple. So we have Kylo Ren. He's arrived, or Ben Solo. He arrives on this different planet. He finds the Knights of Ren, and they are saying, you can join us because he wants to join them, but you have to prove yourself, and that because we need a, we need a good kill. And that's what they say. Not just any kill, but a good, meaningful kill that relates to your life personally. So then we have Kylo Ren, or I'm going to keep saying Kylo Ren. We have Ben Solo. He still hasn't been called Kylo Ren yet, saying that I have killed a Jedi, and then we have the leader of the Knights of Ren, Ren, saying, well, that's not what Snoke told me. You said something about Luke Skywalker. And no, that's when Ben Solo says, no, it's not Luke Skywalker. I killed somebody else. And then we get the whole story for how this plays out. Because in the previous issue, we leave off on a cliffhanger where Ben Solo has gone back to where he first found the Knights of Ren all those years ago with Luke Skywalker. He picks up his helmet, and as he does so... That's when those three Padawans that have been tracking him find him, and that's where we leave off. So we get this entire story of that action and how it plays out. But before they want to find out the action, we get a little backstory for each one of these characters. We have Ty, we have Henix, and we have Vo. So it's a nice story flashback to where we go, where it all begins with the training of Ben Solo at the yet-to-be-named location where Luke Skywalker's Jedi Academy is. And this is an awesome moment, because this is a, a moment that I've been wanting to see in Star Wars in canon, because we've gotten it in Legends, where Luke Skywalker, Grand Master, is training a new lineage of Jedi. And we see that here. We see all these little Padawans on this grassy knoll with Master Luke, with R2-D2 at his side. It almost brought a tear to my eye. It's just a great image. And what we see what makes each one of these characters different with these different Padawans. So we have Vo, and she's this character who is very much um, into fighting. She she almost could be like a dark side character. She loves the violence. She loves fighting. She's very jealous of Ben Solo and his lineage and why he is so powerful in the Force. And we get this nice explanation from Luke himself, which really relates a lot to the fandom that we're in currently, where a lot of people were not happy with Rey being linked to... Uh, Palpatine because well that means that she can't be a nobody and that means that just nobodies can be super power in the force and well Luke Skywalker is explaining that to Vo which I thought was awesome he's saying like look at it this way their door is opened up a little bit wider if you're somebody of lineage your door is opened up wider but that doesn't mean that anybody else that's not necessarily linked to a very strong family in the force can't also open their door just as why to let the force in they might just have to work a little bit harder and train a little bit harder but the end game is you can both be just as powerful so i thought that was awesome so she is all about strength she's all about power then we have the other character named hennix who is kind of the opposite he's all about wisdom we see him trying to open up a holocron which i thought was really cool because that means we know luke skywalker has traveled the galaxy at this point he has gathered up all these holocrons so we have Hennix as the character who's very much into the wisdom of the Force, not so much of the actual physical manifestation of the Force itself. And we also have Ty, who is a character who is very much more on a spiritual side of things. He wants to get to know Ben on a more personal level. He ends up 
learning that Ben is, you know, he's very to himself more than most people are. And that's because Ben is not, he's got something going on. He just doesn't want to explain it. And I think at this point, maybe Snoke has already gotten to him. And remember, at this point, he looks like he's just starting his training with Luke. So it could be around 10 years, 11 years old. Because we also learn in this that soon after he, all, he joined Luke's side, then all these other Padawans started getting trained. So Ben Solo is the first uh, founding member, if you will, of Luke's Jedi Academy. So we get all this awesome backstory, which I really appreciated, really fleshing out these characters and what they meant to Ben Solo. And then, of course, we get into the action, the stuff that left off in that cliffhanger last month in issue number two. We see it play out, and we see Ben Solo so strong in the Force, holding off two Jedi, and then Force pushing another Jedi. And this is where we see him get his first uh, fatality, if you will. He goes up to this cliff. He force pushes in passion. He force pushes Vo off of that cliff. And he doesn't really mean it. It's a, it's a moment of passion. He tries to save her. But then at the same time, you have Hennix that comes up and does a lightsaber throw. Throws him off balance. Throws Ben Solo off balance. He ends up losing his force grip on her as she falls. But then luckily, Ty is there. He's able to grab her. But at the same time, this is where things get a little bit muddy for me in the, in the imagery is when we see the lightsaber that Ben Solo dodges from Hennix. It comes back to Hennix, and then we see a scream. We don't actually see what happens, but it's implied that Hennix is not able to catch his own lightsaber, and it kills him. I'm not sure if I've ever seen that, or if that's really what happened. Guys, met me, like, guys let me know in the comment section below, because I know some of you are really good at the details here. I couldn't really quite place it. I think that's what I'm interpreting out of this uh, comic book panel, because then we also follow back up with Ben Solo after he explains this entire battle to uh, the leader, uh, Bren. He's saying, oh, yeah, Bren's like, that's that's a death, yeah, but it's not a good death. Like, it's still not worthy, but since Snoke says good things about you, which is a big reveal, it's like apparently Knights of Ren were in league with Snoke this whole time. Very interesting stuff there. So, so we also see that he says, you know what, since Snoke has faith in you, I'll give you a pass, you can join us. We're going to go. We're going to cause havoc. And before we do that, I want to give you a change of clothes. And we see the next panel. Ben Solo is looking sort of like his father on the dark side. He's got this really cool smuggler-esque gear. He has that blaster on his hip. So a really awesome outfit. I would love to get sort of like an action figure or even in Battlefront 2 have us like have a skin of Ben Solo before he actually turns to Kylo Ren. But that is pretty much where this issue leaves off. Another great um, development in the character of Ben Solo. Of course, the artwork is fantastic. Will Sliney really captures the likeness of Adam Driver and does those inset panels on the face of, of Ben Solo and how he's so conflicted. And it's really tragic. This is a tragic tale about a character that should have not ended up this way, but just the way things have happened with his manipulation from Snoke and different things on the outside have really turned him against what he wants to do. Like, it clearly in this issue, he does not want to hurt any of these Jedi. And he's, in fact, trying to save the Jedi. And it's coming out, it's falling out of his grip. And, and yeah, you could say that he looks as really his first kill, but it was an inadvertent kill. It wasn't an actual, like, I hate you, you're dead kill. Like, an, almost like an accident in a way. But I think by the end of this so the story of one issue left, I think he might actually give in to the dark side. He's going to confront Tai. He's going to confront uh, Vo, who are both alive and, and are definitely going to take down Ben at this point. We're going to see him get those kills. That'll be the honorable kill, and he's going to have to deal with Ren. So there's a lot of stuff to tie in for this last issue. We're going to also see, hopefully, him enter the First Order as we got a tease from Brendel Hux in the last issue talking with Supreme Leader Snoke. So there's so much to tie in here. Um, again, another great issue. This is one of the best Star Wars stories told in comics so far. So if you're on the fence, definitely go out and get this if you can, because apparently this is sold out once again. I mean, come on. We're talking about the origins of Kylo Ren. Like, they should have made more of these stories. But, hey, that's great for all of the business for Marvel. Hopefully this is going to spike things up. But that is going to do it for Star Raptor for me this week. If you guys like this comic, let's talk about it. In the comment section below, I believe we're not having any new comic book releases next week, but the week after we are going to return with Star Wars issue number three, which is another fantastic story that is going on 
And in Star Wars, the comics have really lit the fire of my imagination and my hype engine because every storyline that we're getting between Darth Vader and between Star Wars and Kylo Ren has left us off on these cliffhangers that has been one, me wanting more every month. And it's just such a satisfying way. And soon we're going to have the Bounty Hunters. And soon after that, we're going to have Dr. Rafa. And soon after that, we're hopefully we're going to get some Project Luminous comics. So if you guys are just jumping into the comics for the first time, it's a great, it's a great time to start because if you're starting with the Star Wars and Kylo Ren, there's, there's not a whole lot to really keep track of ongoing right now before we hit the floodgates and we get like two or three issues a week like we were doing back in uh, December and November. But anyway, that's going to do it for me. If you guys want to hear me talking about stuff that's not Star Wars, I also talk about things like current movies out. I have my review for 1917 and as for the latest in the DC films, we have, which has been renamed, Harley Quinn, The Birds of Prey. So make sure you check out that content as well. And do subscribe to this channel and hit that notification icon. That way, you'll never forget when my videos go up because you'll be notified when they go up. That's going to do it for me, Star Raptor. Thank you so much for watching, and may the Force be with you always. Thanks for checking out the video. Please hit that thumbs up symbol. It helps me know that I'm making content that you guys enjoy. And if you enjoyed this video, I also include two videos down below you guys should check out. And please consider subscribing to this channel. It helps support me and it notifies you guys of when I get new videos up on the channel. You can also contact me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Star Raptor.